Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will compare two different metrics of volume and how they apply to hypertrophy training. First and foremost, let's quantify what volume is in a general sense. Volume in a general sense is a way to quantify the amount of training someone performs. Another way to think of volume is the total amount of workload performed over a given time frame. This can be calculated and quantified in many different ways, depending on the specific sport or exercise we are referring to and what context it is used in. Some examples of volume quantification for other sports could be total distance covered for a field sport athlete or number of pitches for a baseball pitcher. However, for this video, we will discuss how volume is best quantified specifically for hypertrophy training. There are two primary metrics that are often used to quantify volume for hypertrophy training. These are number of sets and volume load. These are not the only ways volume can be quantified, but they are probably the most relevant for hypertrophy training. Let's now cover what each of these methods are. Number of sets refers to the total number of sets that are performed for a muscle group throughout the week of training. So regardless of what exercise or rep range is performed, this method simply uses the total number of sets per week. However, an important caveat to mention when using number of sets to quantify volume is that it assumes each set is taken fairly close to failure. This is an important consideration to make for reasons we will discuss later in this video. Here is an example of how total number of sets can be used to quantify volume. Let's say we train the back twice per week with two exercises on each day. If we perform three sets of each exercise, then we accumulate 12 total sets for the back throughout the week. This same concept can be applied to each muscle group. The other way volume can be quantified is by using volume load. Volume load can be calculated by multiplying sets times reps times load for each exercise. And if trainees want to get very detailed about volume load, they could also multiply this by distance too, meaning the distance the load was moved through. Volume load is a more accurate measurement of total work performed by a muscle, as it accounts for more variables than just number of sets. For example, let's say a trainee performs three sets of six for the back squat with a load of 70 kilos. Volume load can be calculated by multiplying sets times reps times load, which would be three times six times 70. So for the back squat, we can say that the volume load for this exercise in this session was 1,260 kilos. So the question now becomes, which method of quantifying volume is most applicable for hypertrophy training? In short, it is probably best to quantify volume using the total number of sets per muscle group per week rather than a volume load. This was also confirmed as a viable method to quantify volume by the systematic review. The authors concluded that when sets are taken close to failure and rep ranges are somewhere between 6 to 20, number of sets is an adequate method to quantify volume. So why is number of sets a more appropriate quantification than volume load? There are two primary reasons for this, which we will now cover. The first is due to differences in rep ranges and load between sets. It is well established that hypertrophy can be equally achieved using different rep ranges and loads. This meta-analysis analyzed the effects of different rep ranges and loads on muscle growth. The authors concluded that hypertrophy can be equally achieved across a spectrum of different rep ranges and loads when sets are taken close to failure. Based on such findings, this research review aimed to provide loading recommendations for different adaptations. The authors concluded that hypertrophy can be equally achieved with loads as light as 30% 1RM. So as a practical guideline, it seems that hypertrophy can be equally achieved using rep ranges as low as around 6 and as high as around 30 when sets are taken close to failure. This creates issues when attempting to calculate volume load and apply it to hypertrophy training. This is because trainees can achieve equal hypertrophy outcomes using different rep ranges and load, although this would seem different when using volume load to compare volumes. For example, let's compare these two training sessions. In the first example, let's say the trainee performs three sets of six in the bench press with a load of 60 kilos. This would mean their total volume load would be 1,080 kilos. In the second example, let's say the same trainee performs three sets of 15 reps in the bench press with a load of 45 kilos, which equates to a volume load of 2,025 kilos. As we can see, the volume load is almost double in the second example. 
However, this is not indicative of the hypertrophic stimulus because we know hypertrophy can be equally achieved using different rep ranges and loads. In reality, both training sessions are likely to result in a very similar hypertrophic stimulus. Therefore, total number of sets, in this case three, is probably a better way to quantify volume as it provides a more realistic comparison of the overall hypertrophic stimulus. The second reason why volume load may not be the best way to quantify volume is due to the form of load used for the specific exercise. It is well established that hypertrophy can be equally achieved using a variety of different exercises for the same muscle group. Trainees can use barbells, dumbbells, body weight movements, cable machines, plate loader machines, and more. For example, this study compared the hypertrophic effect of a full body training routine using free weights only versus machines only. It was found that both forms of resistance training resulted in similar muscle growth. This also creates issues when using volume load to quantify hypertrophy training. This is because different exercises may involve different relative loads that can't be directly compared, even though they may achieve similar hypertrophy outcomes. For example, let's compare the use of a barbell bench press versus a dumbbell bench press. Let's say this trainee performs three sets of 10 with a load of 50 kilos in the barbell bench press. In the dumbbell bench press, they may also perform three sets of 10 with 20 kilos in each hand for a total of 40 kilos. Naturally, the dumbbell press doesn't allow as heavy loads to be lifted compared with the barbell press. Therefore, the volume load would be 1,500 kilos for the barbell bench and 1,200 kilos for the dumbbell bench. While this seems like a significant discrepancy between the lifts, they are in fact both likely to result in similar hypertrophy outcomes. So now we understand that total number of sets per muscle group is probably a more appropriate method to quantify volume for hypertrophy training compared with volume load. However, are there any potential uses for volume load as a metric? In some cases, there may certainly be. Volume load can be used as a way to compare performance and to assess progress over time for a specific exercise. This means we can compare volume load from session to session for the same exercise in the program as a gauge of performance over time. This may provide some insight into how a trainee is progressing and responding to the training protocol. For example, this study comparing different training frequencies found that volume load was a key factor driving muscle growth. As we can see, even though total number of sets was equated and exercises were the same between groups, one group was able to lift with a greater total volume load because frequency was higher. As a result, the group that lifted with a greater volume load saw superior muscle growth. So when number of sets is equated, volume load can be used to compare performance throughout a training program, which is likely to be a good general gauge of muscle growth over time. For example, let's say a trainee performs three sets of the bench press each week across a four week program. In practice, the trainee may perform the following loads and reps each session. As we can see, rep performance slowly improves over time, resulting in an increase in volume load each session. This is probably a good general indicator that the trainee is slowly growing some muscle mass over time. So what practical recommendations can we conclude from all of this information? Well, when we want to quantify and compare overall volume between different training programs, it definitely seems easiest and most appropriate to use the total number of sets per muscle group per week as a metric. This is because we can achieve equal hypertrophy outcomes using different rep ranges, loads and exercises making volume load inappropriate to determine the overall hypertrophic stimulus. However, volume load can be used as an intra-exercise metric, which compares performance in the same exercises over time. This can be used as a more detailed metric to assess progress. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.